someone who has never heard classical music and you're like in a cafe or something and you don't ha have a way to show them what it sounds like, but what would you say it has to offer that's different from the music that's heard today, say, you know, pop and, and uh, what would you say, you know, I've, I've spent my life in it and, and what, what would you, how, what would you no, use to I, try I, to describe I, to them what, what's, what's the content, you know, like? The content is art. The, con the content is highly refined, brilliant, deep human humanness. And the fact that we as humans, ever since the beginning, are looking for meaning, are trying to find out why we are here, why we just go through the habit of our lives and are born and grow up and eat and sleep and die and, and that sort of thing. And that has been the purpose of art, not just music, but, right. but all art. The beauty of music is that accessibility, especially in the modern world with recordings, but even apart from recordings with performances, it is simply there around us. Um, I can't see the Mona Lisa today. I could get on the plane and I could go to Paris and see the Mona Lisa and see that great piece of art, but I can listen to the Haydn 104th Symphony. I can play the Haydn 104th Symphony, and I am at that moment of engagement of Haydn creating that made amazing piece of music where he's illuminating things about the human condition. And everybody on the planet is capable of experiencing these important things that are expressed so beautifully through and directly, music. So and directly. that's absolutely why yes. it is worth keeping music as art and not just as as the background, background music, of, our, yeah. of our life. Yeah, yeah, that's wonderful. Can I uh, ask you a little bit about the French horn? I mean, sure. you were the principal horn at the Spokane Symphony for 18 years. Um, tell me about the first time you played Stravinsky's Firebird. <laughs> well, I, I've my whole life has been lucky, has been magically lucky of a lot of reasons. I'm from the first year of the baby boom, and you know, the first year of the baby boom is famous for sweeping everything in front of us and, and engaging in so many things. I was a sophomore at the Eastman School of Music, and I had been put as a sophomore into the upper orchestra and was playing in the orchestra when Stravinsky came. Wow. And my first Firebird was played with Igor Stravinsky conducting it. Wow, no kidding. Yeah. And uh, so to have had that connection, it's, it's amazing. funny, I just saw uh, on TV uh, uh, a TV version that he, when he was conducting London Symphony just a few months earlier or later than the performance I did with him in the fall of 1966, but it was... Uh, and it, you, you played that with since then with other com con uh, conductors, yeah. and they, oh, is there something... That was like strikingly different about Stravinsky. Well, interpretation. he's famous for being understated and, and fairly taciturn about it, and just letting the music speak for itself. Mm -hmm. That alone was an important lesson because right at the end of the Firebird for the first horn, which is not what I was playing in that performance, there's a wonderful solo right. That is tricky to figure out how much to do with that solo, and most of all, how much not to do with that solo. There's a certain kind of way that with Stravinsky, you do not wear your heart on your sleeve. Right. You put yourself inside it, you try to find the space inside it to do it, and you just do it. Right, there's a little bit of a distance to it. That's, yeah. that's actually beautiful in itself. Yeah. It? yeah, and that's what he exhibited there, and that's that's what I learned by that experience. That's awesome. I, I wow. It, it, do you think the French horn or the horn has um, a character like uh, I always when I hear it, I always associate it with you know being in an Austrian forest and hearing the hunting call or, you know, if I hear like the, the slow movement of the, uh, the Tchaikovsky Fifth, I think, you know, an earnest sort of lonely, aloof type of character. I mean, it, 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 do you have any associations like that with the, the sound of the horn? Between our infamous lost notes, 
uh, for the rest of our horn playing, we so routinely <laughs> are told by somebody, it is my favorite instrument. It is my favorite sound. Right. And the way I've defined that, with some help from friends and roommates and p observers of it, is that the horn, because it points backward, right. because you put your hand in the bell and kind of attenuate the sound there, the horn does not come to you. You have to go to it. The horn is a sound that gets inside you and kind of fills you from the inside out, you the listener. And therefore, it's so satisfying because then it feels like you and not like something that's been laid on you by an instrumentalist from the outside. You're right. It sounds like the sound you would make if you were speaking with your heart. It yes. just comes right straight from there. Yeah. It's a wonderful sound. Um, do you think that the French horn is often typecast in, in music? I mean, oh, do you think everything <laughs> is typecast? And you know, if if you get the girl, then you're happy with your typecast. <laughs> yeah. I mean, or, with, or if you're the if you're the conquering hero in a Star Wars movie or anything like that, then then we're fine with it. Have you come across a piece of music that you thought, oh, I've never, you know, heard the horn this way before? It's like a, it shows you a new kind of opened a new way of hearing the ho French horn for mm -hmm. you. To, is there a piece of music like that? or No. Okay. It's kind of funny about that because I think the horn is this, is what it is and needs to be. And while it's very fun for a musician to do many different things to make a horn sound different, and yeah. the, the lovely challenge of that, and certainly we want it to be an instrument that grows and stays alive, still just doing the beauty right is enough and so for me that's the satisfying part the sound is itself is just the yeah that's yeah. your job <laughs> as a horn player. so is it is there if you were going to request uh, a, com a composer wants to write a piece for horn that w that's that would be your requirement it's just to it always has to sound beautiful it. yeah it doesn't if you want to impress somebody then use a trumpet or something else. <laughs> okay, so the trumpet guys usually gets the girl. Is that well? They, no. they they do they do initially, but then we get to keep the girl. Oh, okay, very nice.